So soon after I did that um, video about Ahmad Arbery, yet another example of the white supremacist state, uh, that being the, the, the murder of George Floyd, who was murdered in, before everybody's eyes on camera. Um, I sometimes wonder why someone didn't step in and knock that policeman out of the way, but then I sort of think, well, they might have been shot and killed themselves. I don't know, but sort of I find it weird when people stand back and they're filming, literally filming a murder in front of them. But anyway, that's for some other discussion. Um, about Cornell West, I think, mentioned to someone, you know, it's sad to see that we've all become bystanders, Dr. Cornell West. So I'm not going to go through all the various things that are happening right now um, in relation to the Minnesota um, protests against the killing of George Floyd. Um, I think they're very valid and they're very needed. And it's Ajama, Bar Ajama Baraka, who was the 2016 um, presidential candidate, vice presidential candidate for the Green Party, he said, he also, uh, more importantly, he's um, in the Black Alliance for Peace and uh, Rights for the Black Agenda report. And he said, it is important that the world sees images of resistance in the US from black and brown people and their allies. I just hope this can be moved to two things, connecting outrage to the slow murder of Floyd to the daily unnecessary deaths of black people from COVID-19, and secondly, that folks commit to building organization once we get past this moment of spontaneity because the fight against the colonial capitalist system can't be won by it without organization because there is no justice and no reform of the system. So that's from Ajama Braka from Black Alliance for Peace and the Black Agenda Report, and it's, I think it's very important to really understand this is to follow the Black Agenda Report and um, because, well, they have the f their finger on the pulse with this because they connect what uh, the U.S. empire is doing overseas, uh, which is, you know, white supremacist imperialist wars uh, that against brown and black people and destroying their countries and treating them like trash, just like they treated George Floyd and all the other killings by police in the U.S. Uh, white supremacist state, basically. Um, that goes on all the time overseas and you can't have you can't have that going on all the time overseas and all these different countries oppressing black and brown people by US Empire and it not coming back uh, to the, the people in, in in their own country and of course as as uh, black people well know ever since the creation of ever since the foundations of the US uh, you know um, which was basically built on a genocide of um, Native American people, indigenous people, uh, the, the Constitution by the Founding Fathers, the Second Amendment was actually created to, um, to actually put down uprisings of black slaves and also to kill indigenous people and steal their land. Uh, there's a lot of people like to pretend that's not the case with that Second Amendment. They're always going on, well, it's really so that, you know, people can be armed so that they can uprise against the government. Well, when's that going to happen? I don't see that happening no matter how many, law how many laws are brought in to oppress uh, the people of the United States. So I think that's, um, you know, people don't seem to take advantage of that. No, what, what it was really meant to be was to oppress and put down uprisings of black slaves the Second Amendment, and also to um, kill indigenous people and steal their land. Uh, so, you know, so right from the foundings of the US, that's been uh, at the basis of it. So black people have always been a target of, um, in that white supremacist state. And of course, Western, Western countries are based on white supremacy. My own country, uh, you know, we put, we uh, committed genocide of indigenous people here, and particularly in Tasmania. So Australia is uh, built on white supremacist colonized, colonization of um, indigenous people. Derek Chauvin, who uh, after a great um, protest all over the country, Derek Chauvin is the police officer, one of four, who actually had his uh, foot on the, his knee on the neck on the carotid artery, a compressional asphyxiation, basically. On the carotid artery of uh, George Floyd, uh, he wasn't resisting arrest. Anyway, he died, it took nine minutes, and uh, even after he'd passed out, the Derek Chauvin, the police officer, did not remove his neck, knee from the man's neck, and uh, even after all that time, he was saying, I can't breathe, and he even uh, called out for his mother at the end, and he actually said, I'm through, I'm through. Um, so he knew that he wasn't going to, 
there was going to be no mercy. Um, he knew that he was going to be killed toward the end there, and he could not breathe, and he died right in front of everybody. Um, and, you know, it was way too late by the time emergency um, paramedics got there. He was, he had deceased. So that was right in front of everybody, in front of the cameras and stuff, and yet Derek Chauvin, or Chauvin, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, who has had a, a pass of, a, a, a colourful past in relation to um, complaints and also um, racist, um, racist actions. I don't know a whole lot about it, but that's what I've been told, and that's not surprising. Um, he is probably going to end up, even though he's been arrested for, I think, is it third degree? Um, is it a manslaughter charges? So it's not intentional murder, it's manslaughter, which actually I don't believe that. I think he knew exactly what he was doing. The man was begging for his life, basically. Uh, and he just continued on with his um, knee on that man's carotid artery. And, uh, you know, so, um, so that's... And I would say um, when this all settles down that um, he will probably end up skating on this because... Um, the idea of, of police protecting the public is, is a myth for anybody who mistakenly thinks that's, that's what that's about. The police were created to protect the ruling class. That's their, why they were created. It wasn't to protect the public and, or serve the public. It was to protect the ruling class from the public. And they're just doing what they've always been meant to do. Also, oftentimes, are trained um, in apartheid Israel uh, to, um, and that's why these um, techniques, this this technique of the knee on the um, neck of this of George Floyd that killed him, is actually used regularly uh, against Palestinians. And you know how if you follow this channel or you follow the Empire Files, I'm not putting my equating my channel with that, but I'm just saying if you follow the Empire Files, which is an am amazing journalist channel, amazing journalism uh, produced by Abby Martin and Mike Preisner. Um, you would know if you've seen these seven or eight programs now, including their um, documentary, the Gaza Fights for Fle Freedom, you can see the uh, tactics employed by that, that white supremacist state of apartheid Israel. You can see all the tactics, similar tactics to what happened there, happens in Israel to Palestinians by the um, occupational forces, the Israeli um, defense forces, but they're really occupational forces. You can see that. Uh, employed by the uh, U.S. police, and that's because they often go over there for training. And of course, there's a very close connection between U.S. the U.S. and Israel, and that's for another discussion. That's because they both share similar imperialist aims, and they help one another. And they're white supremacist uh, states. Derek Chauvin, the police officer of the four police officers, so that the other three are accomplices, but he committed murder in, in full broad daylight and obviously looked like he was quite comfortable with that. Didn't seem to be concerned at all that the man was begging to be allowed to breathe. Um, he didn't have any problem with him being asphyxiated. And he's going to probably skate on this because this, this is not uncommon for, um, for police officers to um, skate on crimes against black people. And uh, He'll probably, they'll probably say, well, he had comorbidity, he had an underlying uh, medical condition, uh, which is not uncommon with um, the black community because a lot of them are poor because it's, there's a structurally racist system in place which is intended to make sure that um, black people uh, remain oppressed. You only have to see the outcome of poverty with this COVID-19 pandemic where the majority of people who are dying from COVID-19 are black people. Um, so I, the reason I think he's going to skate on this is because they're going to make out that George Floyd had pre-existing conditions, medical conditions, and also, uh, it shouldn't matter of course, but uh, pre-existing medical conditions and also that he, um, he apparently they say that he had, was slightly intoxicated. I don't, I'm not sure. I think that's what the autopsy report said. Um, and so they'll probably blame it on that he was being disorderly in relation to his um, intoxication, although um, footage indicates that there was no resistance of, of arrest by George Floyd. I saw those, um, those videos. I didn't watch the actual video where he was being suffocated because I don't I have a lot of trouble watching that, just as I have a lot of trouble watching any um, videos of animals being tortured and all of that sort of thing. 
Uh, I just don't need that in my head, seeing people being murdered over and over and over again um, with the police getting impunity uh, or, or white people getting impunity from doing that. I just, it's just, I can't watch it. But anyway, I saw bits of it, so I got an idea and I saw an uh, image of um, him with, with the police officer's neck, uh, his knee on his neck. Um, so it's, it's really, really awful. And, um, and yet it's just a, a long string of, of that. Like I say, only a few days ago I was talking about Armand Aubrey being shot, um, being basically lynched in broad daylight by two, uh, well, three white men um, who obviously were have been emboldened by Donald Trump I think anyway so uh, you know they I, that's the problem when you have a white supremacist an overt white supremacist very obviously and, and dog whistling dog whistling in quotes to his base um, saying things like um, uh, you know if they start looting we'll start shooting that's a dog whistle to the to the right it's also um, he's just thinks he's basically emperor I think at this point so this bus right here is filled with cops So we were just literally about to go home and we we're crossing through, I was going to say crossing through a checkpoint, oh my god, crossing through an intersection. Oh, there's the police down there. Yeah, they're, they're down here, guys, hold on. We're getting close, we're getting close. They're getting ready to enter the 5th precinct area where protesters have surrounded the police station. No one even down there, please. Yeah, alert the people that are in the 5th precinct district let them know that the police are on their way holy shit there's like a million of them they're ready they are coming from behind the protesters behind the police station behind Nicollet avenue out of these buses they're ready to and these are the bus drivers that drove them over here they came in super quietly their lights were all off they're ready to like march through they are heading towards the fifth precinct you guys towards the protesters. Like I showed you guys, the majority of the people there were peaceful. Of course, there were some people that did light up the Wells Fargo. I just hope that I don't get like hurt recording them. They're marching. They're ready to go. I'm a little nervous to follow these guys, but... What? Yes, Emma. Emma's protecting me. <laughs> Oh yeah, we broke curfew. That's right. <laughs> We're in trouble, guys. But is it Donald Trump? Is he the problem? Uh, that's something that the Democratic Party and their faithful followers and celebrities who will just put out whatever the Democratic Party want them to put out. Is Donald Trump actually the, the, the problem? Is he the cause of this? Um, no, he's just basically the crass face of a white supremacist imperialist empire. And, you know, if you look at Joe Biden's history, Joe Biden, um, he was a greatly in support and gave a very um, impassioned speech about you know, in the 1994 crime bill, where he's talking about black people like they're a, a special a special breed of of this of uh, species, 
you know, a bit like uh, Hillary Clinton with the super predator remarks. He kind of had that same, um, he was basically saying, I don't care whether people, um, black pe I don't care whether these people have been um, sort of oppressed or they're poor or, or they're victims or whatever. I don't care. Lock them up, basically. That's what he was saying in this crime bill in 1994. We must take back the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents, it doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no background that enabled them to have to uh, become a, a social uh, become socialized into the fabric of society. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. That's number one. There's a consensus on that. Unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally have not been socialized, they literally have not had an opportunity we should focus on them now. If we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets that society has, in fact, in part because of its neglect, created. Again, it does not mean because we created them that we somehow forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my family and yours from them. They are beyond the pale, many of those people beyond the pale, and it's a sad commentary on society. We have no choice but to take them out of society. And the truth is, we don't very well know how to rehabilitate them at that point. That's the sad truth. I'm the guy that said rehabilitation, when it occurs, we don't understand it and notice it, and when we, even when we notice it and we know it occurs, we don't know why. So you cannot make rehabilitation a condition for release. That's why in our system, there's the federal system, you serve 85% of your time. It's a shame, but we don't know how to rehabilitate. But there is a consensus, and I will cease. A, we must make the streets safer. I don't care why someone is a malefactor in society. I don't care why someone is antisocial. I don't care why they become a sociopath. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society, try to help them, try to change the behavior. That's why we do in this bill. We have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it. But they are in jail, away from my mother, your husband, our families. But we would be, being, we would be absolutely stupid as a society if we didn't recognize the condition that nurtured those folks still exist. And we must deal with that. And he has a history of uh, racist um, sort of behavior and supporting race racists um, in during his whole political career. So on top of being an alleged rapist um, in relation to Tara Reid, and I'd say that's probably not a one-off, but so apart from being an alleged rapist um, by Tara Reid, which is quite credible, he's also had a long history of not only ra supporting racist uh, laws like this crime bill, uh, and which fed you know, billions into the private prison industry, which, as you know, is just a uh, slave labor, um, where they get them to make, you know, Victoria's Secret garments and be parts of um, call centers for big old corporations. They end up with debts when they leave the prison. They actually end up charging them to for the for the uh, privilege of being in their awful private prisons. Um, and and the majority of people, it's been mass incarceration of black people. So right from the foundations of the U.S. empire, uh, from the beginnings of the United States, black people have ha understand that the U.S. has always seen them as second-class citizens, has treated them that way, would prefer that they remain, uh, probably have always um, never moved far in their mentality, the white supremacists, from wanting to be able to just go around and shoot down uprising slaves. That's pretty much... Underneath it all, um, you know, this base crass thing, they use all sorts of things to cover up the overt 
racist stuff, you know, sort of from talking about um, when they talk about immigration, it's really just about not wanting any coloured people of colour coming into, you know, the country. And, uh, you know, they, they cover up all sorts of things with sort of language, but underneath it all, it's very clear what all what's going on. So Minneapolis is in, um, you know, they, the uh, protest has burnt down the uh, Minneapolis police station and uh, the, they waited for the police to leave before they did that, uh, which was pretty amazing to watch. There was all these different police cars leaving. People were sh shouting and yelling at them, but they allowed them to leave before they burnt down the police station. I think this is very important. I remember when Chris Hedges was talking about how there's probably going to be a catalyst for something that wakes people up. And this might take a number of different things to wake people up, people who may not really realize that the, not only does the system, not only do they oppress black people to the nth degree, but they are not interested in whatever color you are, a white person or not. If you don't belong to that small 1% or the, the political class, if you don't belong to the capitalist class, you are of no relevance anymore. And the sooner people realize that, that it's it's that it's it's a it's a struggle for everybody, and it always should have been a struggle for everybody to to support the the most oppressed in in our society. That in the U.S. being black people, people of color, um, and including Muslims, different groups that have all been oppressed by the um, capitalist class, by the white supremacist state, and over here in Australia, we should always have been supporting people who are downtrodden, who have been um, oppressed and uh, who are left to basically die in poverty um, here in Australia and black people, indigenous people, all of that. It's, a, it's an international struggle, always has been, but it should be very clear to people it's an international struggle. And any left, anybody on the left who calls themselves on the left, and I've said this before, and if you read the Black Agenda Report, they hammer this home again and again. If you're not against the wars, the white supremacist in, white supremacist imperial wars, if we are not against that, then we are not really left. We're not really left. We don't understand that this is all connected. What's happening in our own backyards right now, and particularly in the United States, what's happening to black people there, the complete disregard for life, whether it be for the COVID pandemic, where they're dying disproportionately, whether it's just the state sanctioning killing and lynching in broad daylight of black people over and over and over again over the decades um, which is becoming more and more so um, and it's always been like this but it's actually becoming more and more so and because we have technology that records it it's much more obvious um, so even though technology is used as surveillance on on us all it also is in some ways a, an ability to film the crimes of the white supremacists uh, state. So there's some benefits in that. But we have all need to recognize that the white, the, the white supremacist imperial wars all over the world, which Obama as a black president, the mistake people made thinking a black president was going to be different. Um, no, he was just part of the national security state endeavors. The, um, you know, he was continuing on the white supremacist imperialist wars himself. Two wars to seven. He expanded two wars to seven. All these different presidents, no matter what party they are from, whatever part of the duopoly, duopoly they're from, they are all supporting the same this same outcome. And some may pretend to be like Joe Biden is pretending that he is uh, sort of someone that will protect and support black people when his whole past is incredibly racist. Um, he he isn't really even the only reason he could possibly win is if Trump ends up. Um, not supporting people financially and basically so many people, so many more people die during this COVID-19 panic, p pandemic. Um, that's the only way Donald Trump may end up not winning is if um, Joe Biden ends up skating on the fact that Donald Trump didn't know, didn't want to deal with this pandemic in any real way and doesn't really care that lots of people die, particularly if they're black people. So that's probably the only way he might end up getting in, Joe Biden, but otherwise I, I think it's very likely that he will, um, that Joe Biden in his cognitive de decline and the fact that he's a Republican and a racist Republican who supported crime bills that are incredibly racist, that have led to deaths and um, deaths of many black people and incarceration of many black people. Both these parties are just supporting this whole system. Change can't come from that, you know, like that Audre Lorde um, 
quote, the master's tools cannot um, dismantle the master's house. You cannot use two, you cannot use two parties that are basically functioning in, um, on their white supremacist imperialist positions and, and, ca and basically supporting disaster capitalism and are uh, benefiting from disaster capitalism. You, you cannot use those two parties and, and that which is within those parties to dismantle something that is dysfunctional and is disastrous and is basically going to be the death of much many more people, including those overseas in these white supremacist imperialist wars. You cannot use the tools of those parties, the politicians that have that are uh, representations of this state of this white supremacist imperialist empire. You can't use them and vote this out, vote to change this. You can, of course, vote and voting is important in its own way. You can vote for Gloria Lariva from the Party for Socialism and Liberation. You can vote for, uh, you know, when eventually the Movement for a People's Party gets up and running in 2024. But the most important thing is that we um, join together in internationalist solidarity, in progressive internationalist solidarity uh, to support black and brown people all over the world, to to push against this these imperialist wars, these never-ending imperialist wars that kill millions of people, and now it's coming home to roost, and it shows the complete disregard for their own people in the United States. You can see it very, very completely laid bare during this uh, pandemic, how little both parties, the duopoly, how little they regard the people of the United States, whether you, no matter what color you are, white, brown, whatever, black, they don't care. The capitalist class protect their own, and that's what they're doing all along. That's what they've been doing all along. And they give, they feign, they do this, I feel your pain um, nonsense to, to everybody and throw you a few crumbs, and people keep voting for them. And hopefully, a lot of the black community, as Ajama Baraka says, will wake up to the fact that um, Joe Biden is not going to do anything to protect them. In fact, why would anybody believe when the man has said, I'm going to veto Medicare for all? And don't believe if people say he has all these progressive task force forces with Bernie Sanders and they're going to work out ways to improve his position. Don't believe that. He'll say anything to get elected, and after he gets elected, it'll be like Obama. I mean, black people suffered greatly under Obama's administration. There was a saying, um, we had to wait to get a black man into the house, uh, into the White House, to lose our house. That's uh, something that black people used to say about Obama. So terrible suffering under Obama, the black community, and it's not going to be any different under, under Joe Biden. Um, could it be worse? most likely because um, the man is, uh, he's an overt racist um, and uh, he is just trying to lead black people up the, the garden path, even saying stupid things like he said on the Breakfast Club um, radio program where he said, if you don't vote, vote for me, you're not black. I mean, how stupid is that? Um, so he, he um, they call them gaps, but really it's just he's having trouble filtering what's happening in the, the cognitive decline in his brain from what's coming out of his mouth, basically, and that's only going to get worse. Anyway, if it's left up to... Uh, I, I still think that Donald Trump is going to, even though he's made a complete mess of the COVID-19 thing, which isn't, isn't surprising because he has no interest in the public whatsoever, but, um, and he doesn't seem to be able to um, bring himself to do the right thing, and that's give Medicare for all, give a... Um, Give base, make sure there's a federal job guarantee, which could be very easily um, brought in with the sovereign economy, and make sure that you make sure that people are paid until they get on their feet again, um, end uh, evictions, and sort of suspend rents like they're doing in Venezuela. I mean, see, this is the countries that are most vilified by the U.S. are often treating their uh, public in a lot better way during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and yet they're constantly vilified. Look at what they're doing. You know, look at what Venezuela is doing to their people. They're constantly, through the mainstream media and everything, vilified. Um, and yet they're doing much better than the U.S., much better, even under the crippling U.S. sanctions that have killed 40,000-plus Venezuelans since 2017. They're still managing to do the, the, the right thing by their people, even, even after this constant coup d'etat that's happening with Juan Guaido 
and uh, with the backing of the U.S. and attempted assassinations of Maduro. So anyway, I'm um, going off the path here, but so there's a lot going on in Minnesota. There's a lot going on with protests in D.C. You've, the police are even, we're even trying to sh um, shoot with rubber bullets the um, journalists, these white journalists that went down in Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky to film it. They literally were pointing and, and, and Ajama Baraka said, no, we don't, you don't live in a police state. You know, they, they're, um, like I say, the police force was not created to protect the people. It's created to protect the oligarchy from the people. If you watch the, the most recent video I did showing Huey Newton, who was a co-founder of the Black Panther Party with Bobby Seale, if you watch uh, that video where Huey Newton is talking about, this was uh, in the 60s, and he's basically talking about the same things that are happening right now, and it, it just shows nothing has changed. I won't replay it here, but check out my previous video, and you'll see that you could almost have that playing right now and having somebody else, a contemporary person, black person, speaking like this. And it's exactly the same thing was happening way back then, where they did their best, the um, state, to try and destroy the Black Panther Party, who was trying to support black people um, through the oppressiveness of the state. They were trying to support against the oppressiveness of the state. And ev the FBI and everybody did, every, every, the state did everything they could to destroy the Black Panther Party and lock them up for decades. Um, there are some, you know, the, 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 or kill, they often assassinated, like, um, with, um, what's his name? Hampton, I can't remember his first name, but, um, they, they assassinated Hampton, but they assassinated, um, you know, uh, Huey, um, Huey Newton was also, uh, killed in, supposedly in some kind of a drug deal, um, I don't think that probably isn't the case, but I imagine they found a way of assassinating him. There's all sorts of ways that the um, state and the FBI uh, can manage to knock people off without it being an obvious assassination. In the case of Hampton, I, I'm sorry, I, I forget his first name. Um, he was overtly, he was um, very obviously assassinated um, by the police. There's a lot of um, very, um, very, very, powerful protests going on in the United States and as I said Chris Hedges said sometimes it takes a catalyst and hopefully but hopefully this won't be seen as some sort of just a one-off thing uh, it, it'd be seen in a much broader way that 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 we have to be anti-war and anti-imperialist um, as well as looking at what's happening internally in our countries it has to be um, sort of seen in the wider context of disaster capitalism and uh, white supremacist imperialism and that it's a class struggle and we have to see it see it as an international struggle and we if we're just only looking with you know blinkers basically at our own what's happening in our own backyard and that's why I I look at the US because that's the epicenter as as MLK said it's 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 the greatest purveyor of violence in the world um, it's basically the epicenter of a lot of the problems in the world today. A lot of the violence that is uh, happening in the world today is usually got U.S. empire meddling somewhere in it, uh, creating uh, wars on lies and, uh, and also starting and also installing different dictators, supporting those dictators and destroying the, the grassroots struggles of those countries, the indigenous people. It's, it's continuing to do that and if we don't sort of see things in the wider wider picture that this is all related what happened to George Floyd what happened to every other black person that's been uh, lynched by the state uh, with impunity they are, there are incidences in a much bigger picture of what's being done to black and brown people all over the world and I, I often look at um, things in cases in you know it's important to look at things in the broader sense otherwise we're just stamping out little fires and the great forest fire of um, you know white supremacy and imperialism is burning brightly and is, is is all powerful and is kind of you know basically eating up the forest meanwhile you know we're all just stamping out little fires all the time we have to look at the cause of a lot of what is happening the causes rather than always addressing the symptoms and then, and then act accordingly in, in nonviolent grassroots movements. Act accordingly to address those things, um, because you can't vote this out. You can't vote vote it out to change it. 
the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. We have to be, we have to be doing something, each one of us, to address this dreadful thing that is also coming back to why people of Trump's base think that Trump cares one iota about the, 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 hap, the fact that they're white. He only cares about them, at the, he's only showing, feigning care with them because he wants them to believe that he's this man of the people, that he's just like them and that he's going to protect them. He, he doesn't care about white people either. He cares about his own kind, wealthy people, people that have power. He only cares about his own brand. And so white, so white poor people need to be, need to realize that this is their struggle too, that this man, Trump, and the other side, who they know don't, don't care about them, that see them as deplorables, in quote, as Hillary Clinton said to them once, um, that they don't care. Neither of the, the capitalist class do not care about them. So this is a struggle for everybody. And um, it's just sad that, that, that a lot of people turn, turn on minority groups instead of turning on the government, the people in power. They turn on each other. And that's exactly what this, the state wants us to do, to turn on each other, to start persecuting Muslims or black people or gay, LGBT people, trans people, etc. All the different minority groups, they want you to turn on each other. We, they want us to turn on each other because then you're not looking at them, that they're the problem. So, so this is something we need to stop doing, is turning on each other um, and, and to recognize what is going on before us and that capitalism is a death machine and that imperialism is inextricably mixed with capitalism. According to Lenin, you cannot, they're inextricably entwined. So, you know, we cannot have one without the other. You cannot have, like capitalism is what's driving imperialism and white supremacy is driving imperialism. So we have to be anti-war, anti-imperialist to be truly on the left. That's the simple bottom line of it. One more thing Ajama Baraka said, which is sort of sad but true, he said, expect to see Reverend Al, uh, Reverend Al, John Lewis, and all kinds of other Liberal Democratic Party House Negroes uh, ordered out to try and calm down the masses. The same House Negroes supporting crime bill Biden and Obama when he attacked Africa and expanded the DOD 1033 program that helped militarize the police. But it's too late. The people are saying through their actions that the Black Alliance for Peace slogan, no compromise, no retreat. That is, it is extremely sad, actually, as as Abjama Baraka and the Black Agenda Report call the, um, they call them the Black Misleadership Class, people like Reverend Al Sharpton and, and people like that. Um, they actually try and, you know, sort of keep everybody sedated and calm and allow this to pass and allow the system just, they keep supporting and propping up the system that is oppressing black people, um, just like Obama continued to prop up and oppress, uh, to prop up the system that um, supports the oppression of black people. I'll leave a couple of links to um, this, these very good um, articles by uh, Danny Haifong about Biden and his racist past. I hope you check them out because it's very, very clear um, how problematic he is. And you can expect that to be expressed in the, the various bills that he supports and the various actions he takes if he ever became president, which is very unlikely, but if he ever did, I mean, Trump will have to really, really stuff up magnificently between now and then uh, the end of the year um, if, if uh, Biden is going to win. And uh, so it's going to be a disaster whichever way. It'll be really awful if Trump gets in and it'll be awful if um, Biden gets in. So I'll leave a few of those, um, a few of those articles, which I think are um, very, very good. And the Gray Zone also has something by uh, which is... Uh, Minneapolis police leader defending George Floyd's killers tied to white power linked biker gang. That's uh, also something to look at. There are other things I was going to say, but uh, I'll just leave the link to the, um, I was going to read a few segments from uh, Danny, Danny Haifong's article, but you can check that out. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, also check out Manar Muhuesh from Mint Press News has done some live streams from Minneapolis because she lives near there or I think in that same city. So check out those um, live streams she's done from Mint Press News. You can find them on Facebook um, and probably on her own uh, mintpressnews.com.
The United States is now involved in over 134 acts of war in predominantly Muslim nations across Africa and the Middle East, with over a thousand military bases dotting the globe. And now NATO and U.S. military bases are also encircling China and Russia. And of course, the media is a distraction. It distracts us with all of the sensationalism that it covers, and it doesn't even acknowledge these wars, these acts of wars, these violence, this, this military-industrial complex, this war-fueled economy. So anyway, um, thanks so much for watching. My name is Trish Roberts. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the notifications bell. Otherwise, you won't receive notifications when I drop a video. Um, click the like button if you like the content. So thanks so much for watching. Till next time. Bye for now.